We, we all were hoping for a V, uh, Pat, as you know, in, in the economy in general. But in your business, you really did kind of see that, didn't you? The volumes fell off a cliff, and then all of a sudden they, they rebounded almost as quickly. Did, is that fair, or, or is that a you? No, it was uh, it, it, it was a very uh, wild ride in the second quarter. You uh, you hit it on the head. Uh, uh, we started to see volumes uh, fall off in the second half of March. April was um, the word collapse wouldn't be too strong to see what happened to our volumes. Then we reached a point of stability in May for a few weeks, a, a, a very short period of time, and then uh, business came roaring back in June. So we. Uh, we fell uh, 30% in, uh, in April, um, hit a, a plateau for just a few weeks, and then we were up uh, almost 40% from uh, the lower level in, in early May to, uh, to June. And uh, that, that recovery has continued on into July. So now we are roughly 5 or 6% below in, ter in terms of our carload volumes, 5 or 6% below the pre-COVID levels. Pretty amazing, Pat. I mean, what you just described, it would have been nice if you called us. Uh, what you just described, the S&P <laughs> sold off about 35, 36 percent, and then came back about 45. It, it almost exactly mirrors uh, what we've seen. And I'm not sure it's good, and I'm not sure it's, it's, it's correlated. For, in any event, your, your, your earnings and, and revenue um, probably reflect more of the downturn than, than the snapback, at least in, in the second quarter. But uh, but what's interesting is the way you've had to to manage through it and what it means about what your company will look like from here on out, because some of the changes that you made, and it, it, it's, it's a fascinating industry in terms of, you know, how many uh, locomotives, you, how, how many cars you put on, on a train, what's in those cars, whether it's intermodal, what you're using, and, and the whole mix changed, and it may change permanently. Can, can you tell us about that, the logistics and, and what, the, what COVID has done for your business? Well, I, I, uh, I'd say that we showed amazing resiliency and, and, uh, and very nimble through this 90-day uh, period. When you think about the roller coaster ride of volumes collapsing, the things we did to consolidate trains, to park locomotives, to take assets out of, uh, out of the equation uh, in response to very rapidly declining volumes, and then uh, again, just a brief respite, uh, kind of at the at the at the trough, and then uh, be able to handle all the business that was coming back to us without adding all of the cost and, and assets. So if you look at where we are now, uh, again in mid July, our volumes are running about six percent below pre-COVID level, but our train starts are down by twenty-five percent. Our active locomotives are down by twenty by twenty. So as we are recovering, we, uh, we are trying to hold and maintain uh, the operating efficiencies that, uh, that we produced on the downside and bring those assets and bring those costs back uh, uh, more slowly. Uh, I think what's going to happen is uh, all the railroads are doing the same thing, by the way. I yeah. think the, the industry in, in, as a whole has shown amazing resiliency. And I think it's going to make rail a more attractive option, more competitive with some of the other modes of transportation. If we can do that, Excellent. become more cost effective and, uh, and without sacrificing customer service, yep. it should be a very good thing for the railroads.